up guys, my name is Julie and this is the Curated Curvy where I bring you along for the journey as I attempt to create the curated wardrobe of my dreams with these two hands. And today I have for you all five patterns you need this spring. Let's get into it. Alright, so I'm going to have my laptop in hand as I go through and I just want to kind of like make this pretty formal, just chit chat with you all. The whole idea behind this video is that like there are so many different pattern options out there to buy and to lust after and I think sometimes we get caught in the weeds of constantly making things that we forget cohesion and when I say we I am talking about me. I forget that the goal at the end of the day is to have a cohesive wardrobe and not a wardrobe filled with clothes. So the whole point behind this video is five patterns that can be mixed and matched and modified to build a cohesive wardrobe. With each pattern I'll give you a brief description of the pattern, I will give you the fabric recommendations, I'll give you the sizing of the pattern and any size inclusive alternatives if necessary. Now without further ado, let's get into the patterns. So the first one that I have is the Dream Frog by Lydia Naomi. Formally, 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 is that the word? <laughs> formally known as the Milkmaid dress. Now, this pattern, without a doubt, is one of my favorite dress patterns to date. I have made this pattern five times. Four out of those five dresses are still in my closet, and I have also made the pattern as a top. So when I speak to you about this pattern, I am speaking from experience. Now, the Milkmaid dress features gathered bus cups, short cups, right? Cups, yeah. <laughs> gathered bust cups, short puffy sleeves that are elasticized at both the shoulder and like the hem of the sleeve. It has a corseted style um, lower bodice half so there are three panels in the front and four panels in the back. It also features a half circle skirt and it is closed using a zipper, an invisible zipper that goes up the back of the dress. The lower portion of the dress which has like all of those seam lines can be made either lined or unlined whatever suits your fancy. If you are looking for a fancier more structured look then you can add boning along all of those seams which will also play into that corseted look. Now in terms of fabrics for this dress I have run the, the gambit on fabrics. I've made it out of quilting cottons, I have made it out of linens, I've made it out of poly crepes and like crinkle crepes. I don't think I've ever made the dress out of a rayon but I have made it out of a linen rayon blend and between you and I that was my least favorite version of the dress. Modifications that I've made to this dress, I've made the top portion as just a top. With her pattern for creating the dress as a top she does have you add like a peplum to the bottom of the dress. I omitted that and I just have it super crop so that is something to keep in mind if you do intend to go this route is that the bodice portion will need to be lengthened a little bit if you like more coverage around your midsection. I have also elongated the sleeves to give a long sleeve effect for a dress that is more appropriate in the cooler weather months. I have also elongated the skirt so I've made it as a midi skirt and I've also made it as a maxi skirt. Now while she does not go over how to elongate the sleeves I do believe that in her video she does talk about elongating the skirt if you're interested in that. Now in terms of sizing, so for the bust it goes from a bust of 32 to 45 and then for the waist a waist of 24 to 37. Obviously that is kind of limiting in the sizes for me personally I am at the tip end of her sizing scale. So I have included another dress alternative for you which is the same style dress. It is by Schultz Apparel and it is the Ella Milkmaid Puff Sleeve Dress I believe. Um, this dress features all the same style lines but honestly has more variations included within the pattern. So I do feel like you get a little bit more bang for your bust if you go this route. Now while I have never sewn this dress I have sewn patterns from Schultz Apparel and I believe that her pattern drafting is immaculate. I absolutely love her patterns. All right the next pattern that I have for you is a shorts pattern and it is the Vogue 1871 shorts. Now this pattern is actually a wardrobe pattern and full disclaimer or disclosure I have only ever sewn the shorts from this pattern. While you may feel like it is a little bit frivolous to buy a wardrobe pattern just for the shorts, when I think of cost per wear I have gotten my money's worth. So cost per wear is the cost of the item divided by the number of times that you wear it. So say I've worn these shorts on the conservative side 12 times and I paid $6 for this pattern. My cost per wear would be 50 cents. So that makes it well worth it. Fun fact, I'm actually wearing those shorts right now. <laughs> All right, so the description is Vogue 1871 is a pair of loose fitting high waist shorts that have a two inch wide elastic waistband, side seams, and a deep hem. There aren't much to these shorts, which means that they're relatively easy to both cut and sew. This is one of like those one day projects where you can cut it and sew it and probably have it ready to go by lunchtime. I love patterns like that. I don't have many of them, but for the few that I have, I adore. In terms of fabrics, I've made these shorts in 
linens. I've made them in two different kinds of rayon, just like a regular rayon and a crinkle rayon. I've made them in gloss fabric and I've also made them in a cotton poplin. Now in my opinion, I feel like these fabrics, these shorts, excuse me, shine more when they have something that has a little bit more weight and drape to it because it just kind of relaxes the shorts and there's a lot of volume in the leg of the shorts and with the stiffer fabric, it just kind of tends to jut out. And to me, it just doesn't look as flattering as it possibly could. So that's something to keep in mind. Modifications to the shorts, I have shortened these shorts a lot. So um, I believe that McCall's dress for a 5'7 person, I am 5'5. Five five. Like I said, I shortened the shorts a lot. I took four inches off of the hem of, e um, of the shorts front and back, and I still give them a one inch hem. Yeah. So about five inches I've taken off of the length. The pattern comes in sizes six to 24, which is a waist of 22 to 41 and a half and a hip of 31 and a half to 50. Now, I don't know the finished garment measurements for this pattern because they're not on the back of the envelope, unfortunately, but I feel like the finished garment measurements would allow these shorts to be more accommodating. But just in case, I do have an alternative for you that is more size inclusive, and that is the Florence Pants by Elizabeth Suzanne. Now, I do have this pattern. I have never made it, but I have every intention to make it. And while this pattern does come as a pant, it is very easy to just shorten it and make them into a short, and you would have the same effect. It also features that nice, thick, two-inch wide waist Span. however it does not have side seam pockets so that's something that you'd have to just be okay with omitting or adding yourself all right and then for pairings obviously if you were to sew the 1871 as shorts you could easily pair it with the milkmaid dress as a blouse for like a complete look all right the next pattern that i have for you is mccall's 7969 this is the infamous cult classic mccall's dress for the last three years this dress has been in their top three bestsellers if you look up the hashtag there are over 7,000 posts of people who have made and modified this dress before i jump ahead of myself let's get into the description all right, so it is a very loose fitting dress, a faux wrap top, pullover dress, has sleeve variations. The most popular sleeve is view A, which is a three quarter puffy sleeve with a lot of fullness that is concentrated towards the back of the sleeve. It has a neck band, which I believe is cut on the bias if I'm not mistaken, a raised waistline, and per the envelope, a narrow hem. I've never sewn it with a narrow hem. Now, in terms of fabric, per the pattern envelope is intended for lightweight fabrics like your lawns, your crepe de chines, and your chalets. Personally, I think that this pattern shines better with a fabric that has a little bit more body to it. So I feel like your lawn would be ideal. I don't think a chalet would be ideal, especially if you're going with view A sleeve because it's just going to allow like all of that volume to droop. You can even see it on the pattern envelope picture. Like her sleeve is just kind of like hanging. You don't really get the idea of how like beautifully voluminous those sleeves are. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so modifications. Now, while the pattern does not list it, a lot of people have sewn this as a top by simply adding um like some gathered rectangles along the bottom to create like the peplum for the top and it looks absolutely beautiful both ways for me personally in terms of modifications i made it into a maxi dress with about three tiers and that is my favorite version of the dress now pairing if you make this as a top again the top can be paired with vogue 1871 as shorts along with the dream frock as a blouse so that's two tops so far with that one short and two dresses also in one pair of shorts. So we got about five items so far that you can mix and match. Now, sizing. Sizing for McCall 7969 is a doozy. There's a lot of ease in this. Remember in the description, it talks about it being a very loose fitting dress. So very roomy, very, very loose fitting. I'll stick to the pattern envelope sizing and then I'll give you my opinion. Per the envelope, this covers a bust of 29 inches to 48 inches or sizes extra small to extra extra large. Keep in mind, I have a bust of 44 inches. I sew this dress comfortably at a size medium. That's a bust 10 inches smaller than mine and I can still fit very comfortably into a medium. Just something to keep in mind. Now, size inclusive alternatives. I had a really hard time finding, um, finding another dress from another pattern company with the same style lines as this dress. Honestly, I couldn't find one. So what I found instead were dresses that had the same essence, like that loose boho fitting, open neck, flowy skirt, puffy sleeve vibe. What I have for you are two different dresses. So the first one is by Tropical Research. It is the, call, I think it's called the puff sleeve dress, if I'm not mistaken. It's called the puffy dress. Um, the finished garment measurements for this dress go from a bust of 51 to 63. All other measurements are negligible. The next dress that I have for you is a dress I love, and it is the Bali dress by Pattern Fantastique. Again, different style lines, same essence. All right, number 
four is the saguaro set by friday pattern company this is another like cult classic like very very popular pattern on instagram i honestly don't think i'd ever purchased cut and sewn a pattern as quickly as this one it was like love at first sight for me in this pattern <laughs> in terms of the description the saguaro set is a two-piece woven set made up of elastic waistband pants and a pullover top the pants feature roomy pockets and a two inch waistband with a drawstring. I'm going to say the drawstring is optional because I didn't include it in mine and I don't feel like it's lacking anything because it doesn't have it. Um, the top has a plunging v-neckline with optional ties that can be worn either forwards or backwards which is a nice like little feature especially if you're somebody who's not comfortable with plunging necklines. In terms of fabrics, the website says that this pattern is ideal for your woven fabrics, which means in my opinion, you can kind of like run the gambit there. Anywhere from like your heavier linens to like your lightweight viscoses and rayons. I sewed my version in a wax cotton that I picked up from a thrift store. My favorite versions of this that I see on the internet, however, are the ones in a more drapey fabric, like your rayons and your viscoses. So I would love to, if I come across the right fabric, sew this up in a more drapey fabric. I feel like it just gives you like that relaxed summer vacation babe vibe you know <laughs> and i really like that all right now for modifications out of necessity for me i actually hacked my pants into shorts because as i said i was working with a vintage cotton that was also thrifted so there was just like no more and i didn't have enough to get the full length um long pants out of that is the only modification that i made to the pattern i haven't seen people kind of like going crazy with modifications on this and it already kind of like has that slight tweaking effect where you can turn it back to front built into the pattern so there's that now in terms of pairing obviously you can take these pants and you can pair them with the two tops we talked about before and you can take the top and you can pair it with the shorts that we've already talked about to give you again more opportunities for mixing and matching now sizing this pattern is already size inclusive on its own it accommodates a bust of 32 inches to 60 inches and a hip of 38 inches to 65 inches now I know that this can seem like a little dress and top heavy there's more emphasis to me on the top than there is the short so I feel like if you have like one good pair like if you have one good pair of jeans you can easily create lots of different looks with like three nice pairs of tops and different jackets and different shoes but the jeans can stay the same so I didn't put too much emphasis on bottoms just having a nice core set of bottoms a nice pair of shorts and a nice pair of pants and then interchangeable tops and obviously some dresses because we love dresses around here <laughs> All right, so the last one that I have for you is the Anna Allen and Thea blouse. This is the only pattern out of all of the ones that I'm suggesting to you that I myself have never sewn. I did purchase this pattern recently and I have every intention of getting it cut out and sewn up, but that is after the projects that I currently have in my queue are completed. The Anna Allen and Thea blouse, say that five times fast, <laughs> is a dartless blouse um, and dress pattern with puff sleeves. All views have a button up front and a fold over placket and a bias face neckline. View A has a puff sleeve at the end or about at that falls at the end or about at your elbow and a narrow bias cuff view b which is the dress version has shorter puff sleeves and a tie if you want to cinch in the way now fabrics again all it says is that this is intended for non-stretch woven fabrics which you can run the gambit on this is another one that i've seen sewn up in a lot of different like modes of fabrics and i I don't think I've ever seen a version of this dress where I wasn't like, man, that looks really good. Now, I can't say that I've seen any in like chalets. I don't know that 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 would suit this pattern, but the world's your oyster. Do what you will. Modifications, none. Never made the dress. And sizing. The pattern of this, um, this pattern accommodates a bust of 31 to 48. The finished garment measurements go from a bust of 38 to 55. Now, I don't believe I included a size inclusive alternative for this because of the way that the blouse is put together and the sleeve first of all the sleeve is so roomy that depending on the amount of gathers you can create more room in the sleeve or less and because the blouse is dartless and there's just that fold over placket you can easily add width to the side seams like anywhere from an inch to two and a half inches to give you more ease in the bust area that would increase like i said the amount of ease which would then take it up a size or two without changing the pattern at all and that is it for the patterns. Thanks so much if you stayed to the end. I do appreciate it. Until next time, stay beautiful, make great things. I'll talk to you later. Bye.